Hi everyone, my name is Meredith and I'd like to welcome you to the Keep It Pro training call brought to you by Networking Wisdom each and every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific for the past eight years. This call is brought to you free of charge every week with the intention to teach you skills and strategies that will guide you to success whether in your business or in your personal life. The host and creator of this call is Mr. Ramacio Fulcher. Ramacio is an internationally recognized mentor, trainer, and entrepreneur. Although Ramacio had extreme success in network marketing, doing over $2 billion in sales with a distribution team of over 750,000 people worldwide, three years ago, he decided to shift gears into the world of international commodities, trade, and finance. Having jumped into this unknown territory, Ramacio turned to God for guidance more than ever, dedicating many hours to reading and listening to the Word of God. Over the last several years, he has gone through many ups and downs as he had to navigate and learn a new trade. As he kept his faith and belief strong, miracles began to take place, helping him through his trials and tribulations. The Word held him steadfast, allowing him to come out on top once again. Having said that, one of his true loves is to teach the Word of God in a simplistic way, always drawing down from his own experiences. Every call is unique, and he is led by God when deciding on the topic of each week. God told him to start this call eight years ago, and because Ramacio has been so obedient, God continues to use him as a vessel to teach his Word. I recommend that you go somewhere quiet where you can focus on this call, because you're because I know what you hear today is going to be profound. Without further ado, let me get out of the way and introduce your Marketplace Minister, Mr. Ramacio Fulcher. Are you there? Absolutely, Meredith. I am here. Thank you so much for being our host. I presume you can hear me okay? Yeah. All right. We can hear you. Well, I want to welcome – all right, thanks. Well, I want to welcome everybody back again for another edition of our Sunday Keep It Pro training call. If you're brand new to the platform – as you just heard, we've been doing this for over eight years. Uh, there are two specific things that we actually teach on Sundays. Number one is we teach the specific skills that you need to get yourself to the very top of whatever business it is that you may be promoting. I want to emphasize once again, we teach the specific skills, not general, but specifics to help you in whatever endeavor you're embarking upon now. The second thing that we teach, guys, has been more of a concentrated focus for us over the last three to four years, and that is we also teach life skills. Many of you may wonder why would we teach both specific skills and why would we teach life skills. We've realized that both specific and life skills go hand in hand. In other words, imagine making a whole bunch of money, right, because you're skilled at it. But if you don't have the wisdom or, a.k.a., the life skills, now (laughs) – you once upon a time were a rich fool. And see, the reason, so that's the reason why we combine both specific skills and life skills together. Uh, As always, guys, these calls are always recorded and they're instantly uploaded to the YouTube channel. If you're unfamiliar, the YouTube channel is Ramacio Fulcher. Once again, R-O-M-A-C-I-O-F-U-L-C-H-E-R, right there on YouTube. You've got eight years eight years of recorded Sunday calls that you can re-listen to at your leisure absolutely free of charge. We've never asked anyone to share one penny, and we never will. These, are, these calls are done completely free of charge. Why? What comes from the heart tends to go straight to the heart. There's one thing that we do ask in return of you, and we ask you to pay it forward. What do we mean by that? The philosophy that we do this call under is we believe what we make happen for others, God will turn right back around, whether you believe it or not, and he'll make it happen for you. Let me say that again. What you make happen for others, God will make it happen for you. If you can just get that in your spirit, get that in your psyche, get that in your mind, and make that your mantra, make that your reason for living, I promise you, without fail, If you and I never meet, if we never speak, this is all you need to hear. What I make happen for others, God will make it happen for me. It doesn't matter if you're you're not happy with your success or progress in your relationship 
or your finances or work. It doesn't matter, you know, how flawed you may be. You know, we all can find something about ourselves that we're just not perfect or we're not proud of. Everybody has something like that. But nevertheless, nevertheless, the principle holds true. Once again, what I make happen for others, God will make it happen for me. I want to encourage you, if we never, if we never meet, I want to encourage you to implement that principle in your life, the principle of servitude. We all have to serve someone, every single one of us. And believe it or not, that's how you get to the top is through your service. Right. So with that, guys, I want to jump, I want to jump back in. I want to jump back in to uh, where we left off last week, guys. We are, if you don't know, this is the year of intentional faith. 2024 is the year of intentional faith and healthy habits. Come on, somebody. Uh, I want you to write that down. This is the year of intentional faith and healthy habits, all right? And what we're doing right now, we are picking back up from where we left off the last two weeks, and we're, 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 we're picking back up from where we left off the last two weeks, and we're diving right back into we're talking about the habit of praise. We're talk, we talk, I don't want to repeat what we cut uh, a couple of weeks ago, but we are, we, are, we are talking about the habit of praise. And today I've got five points that I want to carefully roll out to you about the power of praise. Now, I know some of you that may be uh, new in your faith walk or, or, or some of you that may not even be, uh, you know, people of faith, you, you may be wondering, <laughs> what? what are we talking about? We're getting ready to talk about praise? How can that help me be better on my job? How can that be, help me be better in my performance? How can that help me solve the current issues that I'm having in my relationship? How can that help me solve my challenges with my children? How can that help me solve the healing that I really need? How can that help me get the brand new house that I want for my family or increase my finances? How can praise? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay careful attention today because I'm getting ready to show you not only does it work, it works every single time. And my, my prayer, my goal uh, with all of you that are listening is as I deliver today's message, my prayer is that you will re-listen to this at least two to three times over the next seven days. I want to say that two more times. My goal and prayer is that you will re-listen to this audio at least two to three times within the next seven days. One more time. My goal and prayer is that you'll listen to this re-listen to it at least two to three times within the next seven days. Why am I encouraging you to do that? Because I know that when you hear it again and again, different things are going to be heard in your, that you're going to hear. You will hear, it's like eating a burrito. You can't eat it all in one bite. But if you take your time by bite, you can eventually get it all, right? Same thing here with this call. The more you re-listen to this message, it is going to hit hard. It's going to hit hard. So I pray right now that you have a heart to receive and an ear to hear the hidden riches that others overlook. Come on, say it again. I pray that you have a heart to hear. I pray that you have a heart and an ear to hear the hidden riches that others overlook. We're going to talk about today the habit of praise. That's right, the habit of of praise. What I'm going to do before I get into my five points, I want to start with uh, sharing with you some results, okay? Now, listen, I know that we all, you know, no one on this call is perfect, myself included, and I know that each of us are at different levels in our walk. Each of us are at different levels in our faith walk. There's no competition. God is in no hurry, okay? But I want to really, at the beginning of the call here, I want to talk about the results of praise. 
I want to take you back to the Bible, first of all. And I want to share with you the story, real quickly, of Joshua. I'm not going to be long. I'm just going to be real brief because I want to highlight a few points, okay? The story of Joshua. Long story short, many years ago in the Bible, Joshua was the successor of Moses. Moses mentored Joshua. Many of you guys know Moses for parting the Red Sea, going to Pharaoh, telling King Pharaoh to let my people go. That's all true. But I want to concentrate on Joshua. Joshua, when Moses died, Joshua continued the journey to lead the children of Israel into the promised land, the land that had been promised for them. However, though, write this down. Any time you are going to receive what God has promised you, oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. You better write this. You better grab a pen. Grab a pen, grab a pen, grab a pen, grab a pen. Any time you are going to receive what God has promised you, and every single one of us, there's tons of promises that God has already made to us in the Bible. All you have to do is receive them by faith. All you have to do is receive them by faith. But every time you are going to receive a promise that God has for you, there is always going to be a lion in the way of your promise. There will always be something that stands between you and your promise. Oh, this is good. We, we could literally end the call right now. That was that good. One more time. There will always be, let me, okay, let's, let, let, me, let me personalize it. Some of you, some of you that, uh, you know, have been waiting on the woman of your dreams, okay, and you've been trying to get yourself right or whatever for the woman that you've always dreamt of so that you can have the relationship that, that you've been promised to have, right? There will always be a lion in the way, something stopping you from being a, I don't know if it's fear. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what it is. There will always be a lion in the way, something in the way between you and the promise. For those of you that have that are really been hanging on to the promise of promotion, you want to go to the next level, whatever the next level is in your life. Next level on your job, next level in your business, next level in your spiritual, whatever the next level is, there will always be a lion in the way, something that you're going to have to kill. There will always be those of you that are hanging on to a financial miracle that you, that you, that you just won't let go. God promised you that. There's always going to be a lion in the way, a lion. I want you just to imagine you're hanging on to a promise. You're, try, you're reaching after it. You, you've already decided to receive it by faith. You, you, you're now in pursuit of it, right? Whatever that promise is, but there's always going to be a lion in the way. Back to Joshua. Joshua was fulfilling the promise that God had made to the children of Israel, that they would get to the land, that they would get to the promised land. And one of the lions that was in the way between Joshua and the promise that he was trying to fulfill is the wall of Jericho, the wall of Jericho. Jericho was a city. It was a city. And it had huge, huge, gigantic walls. And it was impossible for Joshua to take the promised land without going through Jericho. So I want you to imagine Joshua is trying to pursue the promise. He's being obedient. But the lion, one of the lions that was in Joshua's way was the city of Jericho the city of Jericho. And so what Joshua did 
Number one, he always prayed. He always prayed, number one. Number two, Joshua was obedient. And number three, Joshua was courageous. Oh, that's really good. Number one, Joshua always prayed to God first before he did anything. He always wanted to make sure God was with him. He prayed to God first. That's number one, guys. Number two, Joshua, see, it's not enough to pray. Not, it's not enough just to pray. Number two, Joshua was obedient. Number three, Joshua was courageous. All right. Now, God gave Joshua specific instructions. Here were the instructions. He told Joshua, along with all of his army, he said, Joshua, I want you to walk around the city of Jericho seven times. And on the seventh time, I want you to. And on the seventh time, I want you to let out to let out a loud shout. Blow your horn with a loud shout on the seventh time. And when you do that, Joshua, the walls will come crumbling down. The purpose of this story is to highlight Joshua's obedience. Number one. But number two, Joshua praised the Lord. He praised God, and then the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. It was a miracle. Again, we're talking about the power of praise. Okay, we, Don't worry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay out the five points of how you praise in just a moment. I'm going to do that in just a moment. But right now, I'm starting with the results. And I want you to know that this is not some dated story that happened 2,000 years ago that no longer exists today. Guys, this works right now in any situation. It works. Why does it work? It works because we all are God's children. And if we're blunt and honest, we need God's advice. We need his counsel to make it throughout the day. We need him to be able to defeat the lions that are in our way. Now, we have two choices. We can take matters into our own hands and do what we please. Again, remember, we all have free will, and sometimes with free will, we don't get it right. Or, choice number two, we can get wisdom from God. We don't have to be perfect to receive wisdom. We don't have to be perfect, but we do have to ask for it. The Bible talks about let any man or woman that does not have wisdom, all you have to do is ask for it. No strings attached. All you have to do is ask. But then once you ask and you receive the revelation or the wisdom, once it's downloaded to you, then you do have to have the obedience, the courage to follow it, to follow through. And it's that part right there, the obedience and the courage to follow through. And it's that part right there, the obedience and the courage to follow, the obedience and the courage, the obedience and the courage to follow through. It's that part right there where miracles happen. It's that part right there, the obedience and the courage is where miracles take place. Obedience and courage. And God told Joshua what to do. He told him, march around the city. And on the seventh time, I want you to let out a loud shout. And that's exactly what he did. 
and the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. All right? Let me give you another example. Short story, King David in the Bible. Once upon a time, King David's army, his own men, had turned against him. His own men, his own army had turned against him, and they were now trying to kill him. David, he went someplace quiet to sit with the Lord. And the Bible tells us that David began to encourage himself in the Lord. He began to encourage himself. He began to dance and praise. They said David gave God so much praise, he was praising so hard, he ended up naked. He ended up praising God. Praising God. He ended up praising. Don't worry. I'm going to teach you how to praise him. He ended up praising God. And as a result, God downloaded him specific instructions on what to do and when to do it to defeat the men that were after him. And God told David, you are to go and pursue and you surely will win. I'm not finished yet. That's story number two. Story number three, I remember the prophet Jehoshaphat in the Bible. Long story short, there was a a bunch of kings, about four or five kings that didn't really like each other, but they had a common enemy. They had a common problem, and they got together, these kings that did not necessarily like each other. They got together, and they went to the prophet Jehoshaphat. And they said, we have a problem. We need to hear an answer from God. Jehoshaphat, the first thing he said, the first thing he said to the kings, he said, bring me the minstrel. Minstrel, would uh, think of it as an organ, you know, sound. He said, we've got to change the atmosphere because in this atmosphere, There's no way the Spirit of God will come in in this atmosphere. Oh, this is good. Somebody please tell me that you're writing this down. I'm going to say it nice and slow. King Jehoshaphat had a problem. Got together with the other, other, bunch of other kings got together with Jehoshaphat. They came to Jehoshaphat and asked him for advice. They, They said, listen, we need to hear from God about this problem. We need, we need a solution, just like you and I. Don't you need a solution for your current problems of today? Are you noticing that Joshua counseled with, with God? Are you noticing David counseled with God? Are you noticing Jehoshaphat counseled with God? And Jehoshaphat, the first thing he said, before I go talk to God, We've got to, he said, bring me the minstrel, which is an organ, which is an organ. An organ produces what? Sound. He he said, we got to change the atmosphere. Write that down. Come on, just write that down. Please, I don't care if I sound crazy. Write that down. I'm trying to give you your answer. We've got to change the atmosphere. You've got to change the atmosphere. In your current state of mind, in your current state that you're in right now, And I don't mean state where you physically live. I'm talking about emotionally where you're at. It's hard to get answers when you're always being depressed and woe is me and I'm mad and I'm sad and how long, God, and how long, God, and how long? How long do I have to wait, Lord? How long? How long? How long? No, 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 that's not how it works. That's that's not how you get God's attention. The Bible says, not Ramacio, the Bible says, that God inhabits the praises of his people. God's residence, praise is God's residence. That's where God lives. Uh, Listen, I I can't make it any more clearer for you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm drawing out story after story after story from the good book, from the Bible, which means basic instructions before leaving earth. In other words, God left instructions for us of what to do for a time such as this. I, I, 
I know this is not what you're used to. I know you want to log online to your local therapist and you want to go hear from your girlfriend or your, or your buddy and, and what should I do? And I'm not saying we shouldn't talk to friends, but I'm saying why not counsel with God? It's free of charge. It's always on time. He's always open 24-7, and he's always right. Why not counsel with God? Why not? He made us a promise as his children. And so what I'm saying to you is Jehoshaphat said, listen, bring me the minstrel. We've got to change the atmosphere. That's what you've got to do. He said to those kings, there is no way I'm going to be able to hear from the Lord in this environment. What did that mean? It means he had to praise God first. When praises go up, blessings come down. When praises go up, write that down, blessings come down. When praises go up, blessings come down. The last story I'll share with you is a story of Paul and Silas when they were in jail. Once again, they started to give God praise. And next thing you know, next thing you know, things started to shake and rumble, and they were delivered. Paul and Silas, they were in jail, but they, they, they were relentless about praising God. And things started to shake and rumble. When they, I got to give you one more, I got to give you one more. There's so many I could give you. Last one, the story of Daniel. Many of you knew when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. Daniel was, he was physically thrown into the lion's den to be eaten by a bunch of lions. He went into the lion's den, and the first thing he began to do is begin to praise God. He began to praise God, praise God. And next thing you know, the lions never touched him. They never touched him. Ladies and gentlemen, could it be that praise is the answer to your problems? Could it be that praise is the answer to your problem? Could it be that praise is the answer to your problems? That is why the name of today's call is your praise has to catch up with your miracle. In other words, God has already spoken about your miracle. The healing you're looking for, he's already said yes to it. The financial increase, miracle that you're looking for, he's already said yes to that. He's already said yes to giving you more wisdom. He's already said yes to giving you specific instruction. He's just like Joshua, he's already said yes to your promise. You've got to receive it by faith. That means receive it in your spirit first. That's what that means. But then secondly, once you receive it by faith, you've got to download your specific you got you got to download your specific instructions. Hello, you've got to download your navigational guide, aka your specific instructions. But how do you download your specific instructions is through the power of praise. So your miracle has already released. It's already been released. Your praise has got to catch up with your miracle. In other words, your miracle is up ahead. Listen, you do, have, you do know that God is not in the past. God is, he's, he's, he's in the present moment. He's right now. You're not waiting on God. No, 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 no. He's already there. Hello? Are you listening to me? He's already there. While you're trying to figure it out, whatever it is, God has already worked it out. I need you to get this. I need you to get this. While you are sitting there thinking, contemplating, perseverating of what to do, I'm telling you, God has already worked it out. But in order for you 
to manifest it. In order for you to manifest the promise, you've got to download your specific instructions for that situation. And how do you download it? How do you get God's attention? Through the power of your praise. Through the power of your praise. God never, David wasn't a perfect man. None of the prophets were perfect. None of them. But God still came to the rescue. He still came to the rescue. If there's a message that I'm trying to get across to every single one of you throughout the world that listen to this message, I'm telling you emphatically, praise is the solution to your problem. Praise is the solution. Yes, it is. To your problem. Go back to the story of Jehoshaphat. He had to change the environment. He said, no, 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 God will not come. He said, God, in this current environment, in this current atmosphere, I can't hear. God won't come in like this, gentlemen. No, 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 no. We've got to, we, 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 we got to send up the praises. We've got to switch it up. God, I won't be able to hear from God in this atmosphere. If I want God's attention, I've got to send up the praises because that's how God told us how to contact him. That's how God told us how to reach him, how to hear from him. That's why I said to you, praise is God's residence. Your miracle is on your tongue. Your miracle, it's on you establishing a habit of praising God. It's on your tongue. It's on your tongue. I know you think it's foolish. I know you think it's crazy. But until you consistently do it and you do it wholeheartedly, you will not see the miracle come to pass for you. And the reason why is because we we live in a crazy world. We live, in, we, we live in a fallen world where men and women, we all have issues. We all have issues. We live in a world right now where, where literally it's, it's a dirty world. It's a beautiful world, but it's got a lot of dirty characters in it. That's why I told you there's always going to be a lion in front of your promise. But all you've got to do is counsel with the biggest lion of all, the lion of Judah, Jesus Christ. All you've got to do, fall on your knees and counsel, get instructions. And he's already given the instructions, the power of praise. That's why God says when you, want to, when you, when you pray to him, enter his gates, with, enter his courts with thanksgiving and praise. That's why scripture tells us, Enter his gates or his courts with thanksgiving and praise, always giving, always praising God for all things. You lose your job, praise God. You lose your, your, your wife, praise God. You lose your child, give God praise. Frustrated, angry, depressed, sad, give God praise. This is what, this is what it tells us in the book of James. No matter what the circumstance, I know you think it's crazy, but God gave us this specific instruction for a reason, because this is how we locate him. This is how we get answers to things. This is how we get specific instructions. This is our navigational guide of what we are to do in our individual specific situation, the power of praise. All right, guys, what I'm going to do now is I want to give you five steps on how you use the power of praise. All right? I've made it very, very simple and very, very clear. 
For those of you that may like to reference, where, where did I get this from so you know I didn't just make this stuff up? Second Chronicles chapter 20. That's the first scripture. Second Chronicles chapter 20. The second scripture is Psalms 36. And the third scripture is Psalms 50, 23. The third scripture is Psalms 50, 23, all right? Step number one on how you use the power of praise. Number one, you've got to get right with God. You've got to get right with God, number one. Being right with, being right with God, it's a prerequisite to hearing from God. In other words, you can fast and pray all day long. But if you refuse to get right with God, there's no guarantee that he will respond. Think about it. If you refused, it never said get perfect. You'll never be perfect. It just said to get right with God. If you refuse to get right with God, then why would God bail you out of your situation also that you can just continue to dismiss him and forget all about him? Why would he do that? So step number one is to get right with God. Again, it doesn't mean to be perfect. None of us are perfect. To get right with God, begin a relationship with him. Confess that he is the Lord and Savior of your life. John 3.16. John 3.16, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Get right with God. Step number one, very simple. You can do it wherever you're at. It don't matter where you are. That's step number one. Step number two, we're talking about the power of praise. Step number two, giving up something physical to gain something spiritual. In other words, step number two, giving up something physical to gain something spiritual. So, here it is, you want to hear from God. You want to hear, you, you, you want to hear from God on what to do in that specific situation that you're in. So when we talk about giving up something physical, we're talking about fasting, right? Examples of fasting are, you know, maybe you don't eat a meal for a day. Maybe, maybe you don't eat a meal for several days. Maybe you don't Use social media for a day or two or three or four or five. In other words, you can determine there's all different types of fasts out there, okay? Maybe you don't watch TV for a day. Maybe you give up meat for a day. But the the point is you're giving up something physical so that you can gain something spiritual. Now, 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 why is this the case? Why does this work? Because, see, God is re- he's a real big component of character. God really cares about sacrifice. He really does. And when we sacrifice, and sacrifice means to go without something, when we do that, we also, you know, it's almost like we become more sensitive so that we can hear because we're going without something. And, and, in, and because God's not a human, he's a spirit, he can feel that. He can feel that you're letting go of something. You're, 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 you're choosing not to uh, eat between this time and that time, or you're switching up your, your diet and you're, you're not going to do meat or you're not going to do this or you're not going to do social media or whatever the thing is that you're going to do, God can feel that you're, 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 refrain, you're sacrificing so that you can gain his attention, so that you can get closer to him. That's step number two. Step number three. I want to teach you how you open up your prayer. Step number three, I want to teach you how you open up your prayer. When you open up your prayer, you want to tell God how good he is, how great he is, how awesome he is, how he rules from heaven, how he rules over all the kingdoms. You want to tell God that there's no problem on earth so big that God cannot overrule it. You want to tell God that the enemy is no competition for God. That's right. 
Number three, you, I'm trying to teach you how you open up your prayer. So this is 3A, 3A. You want to tell God how good he is, how great he is, how awesome he is, how he rules from heaven, how he rules over every kingdom, how there's nothing too big for God. The enemy has no – in other words, there you are dead broke. There you are needing money, needing a relationship, whatever it is, needing healing. Remind God that you believe that nothing is too big for him. Now, why are you doing this? You are giving God praise. You're letting him know he is your alpha. That means the beginning. And he is your omega. That means the end. You're letting him know that not, despite you may be crying, you may be lonely, you may be needing healing, you may be needing financial uh, uh, rest, rest, restitution, Wh whatever it is that you need, promotion, you're letting God know nothing is bigger than him. Now, 3B, I want to tell you, step number 3B, 3B, you want to talk about God's power. You want to talk about God's power. Oh, this is the one I love. I love this one. See, 3A is where you are telling God how great he is. You're talking, you're, 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 you're talking to God about God's character how awesome he is, how he rules, how big he is, how sovereign he is, right? That's, that's 3A. But 3B is when you open your mouth, and you can't do this quietly. You cannot do it quietly. But this is when you talk about God's power. God's power is tied to God's character. Now, in order for you to talk about God's power, you need to know what he is and what he can do. You need to know what God is, who God is, and what he can do. You got to know that information, guys. And the only way you can know that is you got to open your Bible and you got to study. You got to read. Watch videos. Learn. I just gave you four stories today of God's power. Lord, I remember what you did for Joshua, how, you, how when he praised you, you split rocks and the walls of Jericho came, came tumbling down. Lord, I remember what you did for Moses when he praised you and you split the Red Sea so the children of Israel is, so, so that the children of of the children, the children of the, the children of Israel could walk across dry land. Lord, I remember what you did for Jehoshaphat. Lord, I remember what you did for Paul and Silas. Lord, I remember what you did for King David when he praised you, and you gave him specific instructions on how to defeat his foe. You see? Talk about God's power. Lord, I remember how you raised Lazarus from the dead. See, when you're doing this out of your mouth, ladies and gentlemen, what you are doing is you are instantly changing the atmosphere Listen to me. Write this down. What you are doing, when you are doing this, what you are doing, if you are doing it full-hearted, you are changing the atmosphere so that you can hear the voice of God. When you are praising him and you're doing it full-heartedly, wholeheartedly, even though you might be in a destitute situation, you are sending up praises. And God will send back blessings. God made us all a promise that we could call on, on him anytime. What do you think David did in the Bible when he was in trouble? He called on the Lord. What do you think Moses did when he was in trouble? He called on the Lord. 
What do you think, you know, every single prophet in the Bible, what do you think they did? They called on the name of the Lord any time they were in trouble. Nobody's perfect. I'm trying to get this through your thick skull, that praise is your answer. All right? So that was step number three. Let's move to step number four. Step number four. After you have prayed, you want to look to hear a prophetic word, better known as a rhema word. Write that down. Step number four. After you have prayed, and I just told you how to pray in step three, you want to look to hear a prophetic word, what is known as a rhema, R-H-E-M-A, word. Rhema word simply means a right now word. This is a, this is a right now specific utterance for your specific situation. Wait a minute. Did you catch that? There you are looking for healing. There you are looking for wholeness. There you are looking for instructions, what job to take, what, 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 what's your next move. On, on how do you promote, how do you, what, what should I do, which, which, which profession should I choose, which way should I go, how do I do this, Lord, how do I do that? You need a rhema word. After you have prayed, after step three, you should be looking to hear a rhema word. A rhema word, which is a right now word or a specific utterance for your specific situation. In the Bible, the prophet told Jehoshaphat, if you listen to the prophet, you will succeed. In other words, that was his rhema word. If you listen to the prophet, you will succeed. Now, you, you do have to understand, guys, we've covered, four of the, we've covered four out of the five steps so far. You've got to understand that everything happens spiritually first, and then it happens naturally second. Everything happens spiritually first, and then it happens naturally second. Everything happens in the spirit realm First, write that down, and then it shows up naturally. That's the reason why you want to get a rhema word for your specific situation. Now, step number five. This is the last and final step. All right, let, let's, recover the, let's recover real quick for those of you just taking some notes. Make sure you got it written down correctly. Step number one. Step number one was, to get right with God. We talked about that. Step number two, fasting. We talked about that, how to give up something physical, to gain something spiritual. Step number three, we talked about how to open up your prayer, how to open up your prayer. In other words, how to do it, how to open it up, how to begin your prayer. Step number four, after you pray, looking to hear a prophetic rhema word. That's step number four. And finally, step number five. Step number five, here it is. Now it is time to praise. Now it is time to praise. That's step number five. Now, I want to I want to say this to you. Praise must be expressed. Praise is a public worship. It cannot be private. Can you praise God? <clears throat> can you praise God in private? Yes, you can. But when we say public, we mean you got to do it out loud. It's not something that you can do privately in your head. No. Praise is a public worship. Praise is declaring where you stand. Always remember, God inhabits the praises of his people. Always remember, God hangs out in the praise when people's praise is coming from the right heart. In other words, praise is God's location. That's God's residence. 
God hangs out in the praises when praise is coming from the right heart. Always remember, praise God, he's bigger than your situation. Praising God, he's greater than whatever the greatest challenge in your life. And lastly, I want you to remember, in the scriptures, when God heard their praises, he sent an ambush for the enemy. When God heard, write this down, their praises, he sent an ambush for the enemy. When you get your praise on, you shift your problems over to God. When you start to get your praise on, and you get really serious about it, you shift, S-H-I-F-T, you shift your problems over to God. Bottom line, when you praise God now, your problems will collapse. When you praise God now, your problems will collapse. In the book of Psalms, Psalms 50, verse 23, praise is your deliverance. God will deliver you in your praise. That's the last thing I want to tell you. God, Psalms 50, 23, praise is your deliverance. God will deliver you in your praise. Now, what does it mean when we talk about deliver you? Here's what it means. Let's just think about this for a second. When Jehoshaphat praised God, God gave him specific instructions for him to be delivered on how to defeat his foe. When Joshua praised God, God gave him specific instructions on how to defeat Jericho. When Paul and Silas praised God, all of a sudden, things they, begin, they got delivered. When Moses began to give God praise, all of a sudden, he split the Red Sea. When, De- when David began to give God praise, and he was praising God so loud, so aggressively, he was praising him, dancing and and joyful and, and praising God with his mouth. With his mouth. He started to take all of his clothes off. He got naked. He was just so happy. He was praising God despite the situation that he was in. God gave him specific instructions on how to defeat, a.k.a. delivered him from his enemies. When Daniel was getting ready to be thrown into the lion's den and he started to praise God, and I just taught you, I just taught you, I just taught you how to praise God. I told you how to do it. When Daniel began to praise God, he was thrown into the lion's den and not not one lion, they they didn't even touch him. They didn't even touch him. He was delivered. Ladies and gentlemen, I can go prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet and show you specific examples that when they begin to praise God, when they begin to praise God, their miracle came. Their deliverance came. Did you you write that down? When I begin to praise him wholeheartedly, the atmosphere changes. Now I can get specific instructions on what to do in my situation. And there goes my deliverance. There goes my miracle. This is why the scripture tells us, ladies and gentlemen, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. 
Let everything that has breath, that means you and I, praise ye the Lord. Why was God telling us to do that? Because he knew when we give him praise, that's his residence. That's the bat signal. That's how he gives you the answers to the test. I know I'm being very emphatic. I'm doing that intentionally because the year of 2024 is the year of intentional faith and healthy habits. And I'm telling you that I'm not just talking to you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking to myself, that we together, you and I, we have to make praise a habit. We can't make this a I'm going to do it sometime thing. We've got to make this a habit because this is the year of intentional faith. In other words, I'm going to be very specific with my faith. I'm not just going to be general. Oh, I trust God. I believe God. I believe God for what? What are you believing him for? I'm going to be intentional. So that means we've got to be consistent with our praise. My question to each of you listening as we end today's call, will you decide today? Will you decide today to draw a line in the sand and from today forward begin the journey of being, of being consistent with giving God praise? After what you just heard today, Will you re-listen to this two to three times over the next week? Will you decide today, after the tool that we just gave you today, will you decide to begin the journey of consistently giving God praise? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this was a phenomenal call. Phenomenal call because we broke it down. We were very specific on what to do, why to do it, and knowing that it will work. Ladies and gentlemen, I love each and every single one of you. I love being on these calls. Together we both learn. Uh, I'm the California kid. Thank you for listening, guys. And we'll see everybody next week. And, yes, I know the Super Bowl is next week, but we will be doing a Sunday call on Super Bowl Sunday next Sunday. Thanks for listening. I love you. I'll see you guys all next week. Goodbye, everybody.